Hello, I'm Dr. Abstract and welcome to Making Interactive NFTs. This is the TIA site and uh, we've made lots of interactive NFTs on TIA on the Tezo blockchain. We've also made interactive NFTs on the generative art platform called FX Hash. And this series looks at how we made these interactive NFTs, starting with this one right here. How about air balls? So let's have a look. 11. This is air balls right here. And hey, that's me, Dr. Abstract in there. And as I wave around, I make these <laughs> air balls, I guess you could call it. There I am. So you can see my movement and my velvet my velvet v-neck. Yeah. Anyway, that's, that's enough of me. We'll slide this slider down. And let's have a look and see how we made the code to do this. Okay, so we'll reduce this. We're in HTML. So to make interactive NFTs, it's uh, just an HTML app with, say, JavaScript, for instance. Uh, we're using the Zim framework. And that's at zimjs.com. All of these have been made with Zim. And we have a template there that you can download, a zip file to get you started. Um, we, in the template, for instance, for Tia, which used to be Hick at Nunk, we would bring in a preview graphic, uh, and that's available here in Assets. So this is all in the Airballs folder. Basically, you just zip up the folder and you upload it to Tia, and then it will take care of it and put it on the interplanetary file system. All of your assets, such as sounds and, and um, images, need to be local and your script calls need to be local. So here they are locally in the folders. We're calling Zim, and this extra thing for CAM, that's uh, the Zim CAM helper library. And that's all available in here in directories. So once again, we'll, we'll post a link to the zip file for a template. This series is more about how we've made the interactive NFTs. There is a video on how to mint interactive NFTs, and we'll put the link to that as well. So let's go see how this was made. Bum, bum, bum. Zim is a framework, and we've called a new frame. We're filling that frame. Um, basically what will happen is it will fill the window with our app. There's also fit. We often use fit and that would fit the app in the window. But, uh, and there's full as well, which would uh, provide a full screen no matter how big the screen is. But then the stage size changes and it's a little harder to, to build for. In this case, we're taking basically the camera, this will be sort of the dimensions or proportions of the camera, and we're expanding that to fill whatever is viewable. In Tia, it starts off with a square. So often we made our apps just using a fit mode and we made them square and they fit. So most of the other ones are fit mode and they just fit right in that square. Um, perhaps rather than talking about it, why don't I just pop on out to Zim and I can easily show you the template. So zimjs.com, here's where we could grab the template right there. That's the code for the template. But there's also more templates here. And here are um, here's what I'm talking about. This is the fit mode where it fits within a window. This is the fill mode. So no matter how big the window is, it takes the proportion and makes it so that it fits around the outside of it rather than around the inside of it. <laughs> And the full mode changes the dimensions. And sometimes it's tricky working with different dimensions. You have to do manual scaling. We might have to do some manual positioning here with this. And with this one, the easiest one, usually you don't have to do any um, manual fitting on resize because it just, it just fits the whole thing that you built inside there. You can also, uh, just because we're here, put Zim inside of HTML tags and have it fit within HTML tags as well. So uh, then the rest of the HTML page is there. Anyway, um, we don't have to worry about uh, putting it in the HTML because uh, Tia will provide an iframe. And so we just basically fill that iframe, whatever whatever it is. Uh, Tia's got two modes. The, the one mode is a square view, sort of like this, so this is a preview. And then you can also click on it. Once you load it, you can click on it into a full screen. 
So uh, yeah, here, most of these are fit mode. They just fit within that. And in most cases, we're doing square formats because that's the very first thing that, that people see. So uh, there you go. Anyway, blah, bitty, blah, bitty, blah. Let's head on back into the code now. Um, we're bringing in our font as well. And once again, that font that we're going to be using is local inside of assets. So that's for a custom font. When the frame is ready, we're going to be given a stage and we store those, uh, the stage, stage widths and so forth. We store those in uh, local variables. We have a pane that is going to be provided. This is like a pop-up window that will pop up if they haven't accepted the camera or if they, uh, yeah, I guess if there's some error in accepting the camera. We're going to use a font on that pane of future spore. We could have also made a custom label in there, like new label, label. And in there we would have said, oops. And the next parameter is the size of that, which would be 100. And the next parameter is the font, which is future spore. So we could have done it that way, uh, but sometimes it's easier. The, the pane sort of, you don't have to do a custom label. The pane will, will turn that into a label, a default label. And here we are styling that default label. So we've done it sort of in a two-step process. We're turning off the style there because otherwise the style would work on, um, this font would work on whatever the cam is making. And this is a cam ask. So we didn't see that, but when, when this first starts up here, if we refresh, refresh, there's the cam ask. Uh, the, the reason why this is here is because on Apple, you need to interact with the app before you can play a video. And that unfortunately includes a video even when you accept the the um the browser thing saying do you accept to use the cam in, in windows versions um that accepting of the cam is is considered interacting with the app in apple it's not so <laughs> so we made this um, sort of more generic yes i accept the cam now the browser asks hello and here we are we're <laughs> we're into our our app but anyway, uh, back to the code. So if we didn't turn off the style, then that cam ask would have been future spore. And this is really neat, actually, that we are that we have styles on the canvas. As we go through this making of interactive NFTs, we'll also tell you a little bit about Zim. It's a canvas framework. Uh, JavaScript Canvas Framework. As far as I know, we're the only JavaScript Canvas Framework that has styles built into the canvas. You, you can style the canvas with CSS, but you can't style the components that you're putting on the canvas, uh, but you can in Zim. Yay! Um, because we provided object literals that are much like CSS. As a matter of fact, it's the other way around. CSS are much like object literals. <laughs> And there, there's more we could do. For instance, we could style specifically the pane by saying pane will get these styles. Uh, I like that. Oops, one more. So now only the panes will get these styles. And if we wanted to, we could give this pane a group ID, and then we could style that group ID, like intro or something like that. And then only only components that have the group of intro. We don't call it a class. It's like a class in CSS, but we don't call it a class because we're dealing with classes as well. <laughs> For instance, the pane is a pane class. So it starts to get confusing. So in other words, we could group that. Um, that would mean we'd have to identify this pane with a group ID. And the group ID um, is far away. Like uh, Zim's got a bunch of parameters. So let's just pop out here. Here's Zim, and we'll go to the docs. Here's where you would find out what those parameters are. So if we search pane here, pane, like so, these are the parameters for pane. And there's the group parameter. Basically, the style parameters were all added to the end of everything. Um, so to get to group, we we'd have to either say null, 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 or, or undefined, 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 undefined. <laughs> you know, that, that would be too much, obviously. 
So in, instead, uh, what we can do is turn these into a Zim Duo technique or a configuration object. So Zim has parameters two ways in most cases. Uh, we call that Zim Duo, which was invented in Zim 2. Zim Duo, which was Zim 2. So this would be the width. And all we do is we turn this into an object literal right here. And then we have to name the parameters, the width, the height, this one is the label. This one is the background, background color. And then we could go to group of intro, like that, squigglies. All right, and sometimes we'll drop those down. You'll see it throughout our code as we go. So if we're showing you how to make these interactive NFTs, you see what I mean? It's nice to kind of know this is used all the time. It's called the Zim Duo technique. And that would mean that this pane is part of the group intro and therefore it would receive these styles. So very much like a class. Anyway, I don't want to do any of that. And uh, there we go. We're back to, almost back to, there we go. We're back to just passing in our oops and applying the style. In the latest Zim, or maybe the last version of Zim, this was coded a while back, so we've advanced Zim since this time, but we have a once colon true there, and that will mean it will apply this style once, and we can just take that away. It would apply that style to whatever comes next, the pane. All right, so we're not showing this pane yet. We've made the pane. Where we show the pane is we're going to do this ask, and if they say yes, then we're good. But down below at the end, if we don't, else we're going to show the pane. And indeed, if we get another error a type, then we also show the pane there. Okay, so that's where we're showing it. Um, there's nothing in the body. Zim will make the canvas for us. So all this is on the canvas tag in the HTML. We've uh, seen the frame, we've seen the pane being made there, and now here's a cam ask. We have a cam ask. The cam ask comes from the cam library here. In the latest version of Zim, we could have, well, previous version of Zim, we could just say Zim cam there, cam, and not done that. In the latest version of Zim, which is Zim version Zim, <laughs> we've gone to ES6 modules. So this, we wouldn't even use a script. We would end up um, setting this to import, or no, type uh, equals module here, module like that. And we would say import Zim from, hmm, well, it's very close to this. Although that would have to be on a server, I'm not sure. I actually haven't made an NFT with the latest version of Zim to see how that works with JavaScript um, imports. I think it would be fine, probably. I think it's just something like dot script, we would have to say dot script. Yeah, I expect so. And and then if it's in the NFT directory, well, it wouldn't be. It's in the 00 because it's now Zim 00, and it would be uh, Zim underscore cam, just like that. So I believe that's what it would be like in the latest version of Zim where we import uh, a JavaScript module. This will import the other uh, things that are needed because what we need is CreateJS, we need a minified version of Zim, and we need a cam. That will call all three of those, but you would have to put all three of those locally and might have to do some adjustment at the time too, to, uh, because this thing imports other things, but it will import from absolute URLs. So because we can't use absolute URLs in here, we have to point to folders. You'd have to adjust those other ones to point inside here. So we'll probably be launching a new uh, zip file with that latest in there. Currently though, um, that zip file holds zim nft, which is the version well, we just launched Zim version Zim like last week or something like that. Anyway, um, we don't need this. Um, this one right here, if you take a look, that's right here, is actually calling what we call the crystal. It's calling two scripts with, uh, with the for the price of one. And with um, the latest B NFT as well, this was the very first thing that we made with Cam, this NFT. Uh, the, the cam module, that was a new cam module, and 
uh, after that, we brought that into the crystals. So we could have said underscore cam here like that and not have even brought in the cam. And that, that was the latest crystal version. Like I said, we moved away from crystals into, um, <laughs> sorry for that, into uh, the, the modules, the JavaScript ES6 modules. Okay, anyway, um, that's fine. This would still work, no problem. And uh, why was I showing you that? Oh yes, that's where the cam ask comes from. And that was that little widget that pops up asking you if you want um, to use the camera. Here, uh, here's where you can put the callback. So this is a callback. When we show, as soon as we hide that, it will call whatever we pass in here. And it will pass it whether we accepted the camera. So if yes is true, if yes is true, if yes, then we're going to do this stuff. Um, right there. Uh, else, oh, sorry, I guess it didn't open up the else. So that, that, that goes from here. I thought that was going to collapse just the conditional to here. Else we show the pain. Can I collapse a conditional? Let me just check. Huh. This one? No, that doesn't help. That just collapses this. Sorry, I thought that would have collapsed to the, the end of the conditional here, but it didn't. Anyway, it collapsed it there. <laughs> uh, coming back up. Hmm, right. So if yes, that means we've accepted the cam, we're going to make this thing called a cam motion. And that captures your the motion. This is usually used for making a cursor follow your finger, for instance. So we're back here now on the here. Usually as I move, um, a cursor will follow the finger and I can hold on things and interact with stuff by just using my hands. Or you could wave over an area like a sensor. And when I wave over the sensor, it will trigger the sensor. That's, that's cool as well. This is more effects that are just put on the motion. And uh, I mean, that's fun. So Zim, Cam Motion has this thing called a visualizer. You can specify different types of visualizers or even customize and add your own, uh, I don't know, emojis or something like that. Have a set of emojis follow your motion. Who knows? And these are the colors of the, the circle that we're going to do. And this is called a Zim V value. It's a dynamic parameter. It's an array, obviously. But if you pass in an array, Zim will pick from that array. So isn't that amazing? That's a Zim V. It's very powerful. You could also pass in a series. Um, so imagine you have a particle emitter that's emitting particles. Um, if you passed in an array, it would pick randomly. Each particle that it makes, it would pick randomly from that. If you passed in a series, uh, which is just series and then a list of particle or things, then it would pick in order. So if you were tiling something, every time you tile an object, it could tile the next thing in the order, or it could tile randomly, or it can tile the results of a function. These are all Zim V values, we call them, because they were created in Zim version V, which was five, as opposed to Zim Duo, which was version two. Um, and it makes Zim very powerful. Uh, you may not realize the power of it until you start working with Zim. It, it's absolutely incredible. We've made those two things, Zim Duo and Zim V, available for other libraries as well. They're on GitHub just as, you know, independent uh, scripts that you could use in your own frameworks or libraries. Um, you might think, well, why couldn't you just put pass in a random number to the emitter, or like a random, sorry, random shape to the emitter? Well, what would happen then, if you passed in something random to the emitter, the emitter would then emit that random thing over and over, not a bunch of different random things. So it's like one step removed, and that's why dynamic parameters are important. Uh, another example would be like an interval. So Zim's got interval, and you pass it the seconds that you want the interval to happen. If you passed it a random, say random between 10 and 20 seconds, or well, call it one in 10 seconds, more reasonable, um, say seven, then the interval, normal intervals, would just say, okay, I'm at seven, 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 seven. So that's not really what we want. What we want is the interval to go at a different time each time. So with the Zim V value, we can pass in an array of different times, and it would pick from that. 
or we could pass in a min-max object literal. And that's another Zim V format, a min-max, and it would pick between that min-max. So, um, okay, anyway, on we go. Uh, in other words, this is why we have all those colored balls is because we passed in an array of Zim colors. These are Zim colors. If you want HTML colors, you would put quotes around them or you could do a you know, number sign. Um, CC000 or something for red. Okay, uh, but the Zim colors are sort of built in there. There's also a clear color, which is see-through, and there's shades of grays and stuff as well. Light, lighter, dark, darker. I think you may have noticed that up here. Darker uh, was a color. Clear can't be interacted with, though, so you would have to, if you wanted to interact with something that's clear, you would probably pass in faint, which is the lightest alpha that can be interacted with, or you can use this thing called expand, and that that's usually used for mobile to expand, say, a button by 20 pixels, so it's easier for a thumb to hit. Uh, expand will put a hit area in behind, an invisible hit area. Well, it's not. Well, it's a little bit different anyway. Um, uh, right. On we go. You want to see uh, what happens when we the camera's already? So this is us saying, "Hey, let's let's uh, make this visualizer on the camera." There's different things that we can do with cam motion. There's cam cursor and stuff like that. But this this one is just a general cam motion with a visualizer added. And then when that's all ready to go, when the camera's been made, uh, it just takes a little bit then we're going to bring in this title and and there it is it's a label called airballs and it's got a future for spore font it's white we're locating it this is um a little tricky here because when you've got the fill mode um the the screen changes let's let's adjust this to a fit mode and i can show you the difference so there's a fit i'm changing that to fit take one last look at the full this is uh or fill sorry this is the fill mode. I don't know if you can see what's going on. You see how the camera completely fills no matter what we do. If I make it really skinny, hello camera, it's still in there. Um, if we make it uh, tall and skinny, the camera's still in there. So what we're doing is taking the dimensions of the camera. Right now, there's camera outside of here as well. Taking the dimensions of the camera, just making sure that the camera always fills uh, our window. Um, what that means, though, is since really the frame is out here, this is the frame corner, um, and, and this text would normally sit a certain position from the corner of the frame and it would be outside, we wouldn't be able to see it. So what we're doing is when we resize the window or when the window is resized, we're actually picking that up and moving it over what is called the frame's visible width. Okay, so this is this is our visible X, I think it is. So this is a visible X and visible Y. This is really the frame X and Y is way out here. All right, normally we don't have to do that. I'm gonna refresh this. I've changed it to the fit mode. So here's what the fit mode looks like. It's different already. You can see uh, yes and yes, allow please. Now um, the frame is fitting in here. So you see how the frame fits inside of the window? Therefore, we don't have to worry about positioning this. We position it once, and it would always, uh, you can position it relative to zero, zero, which is the top left corner, and it would always just stay there. <laughs> um, so, but then when I went in to see it, view this in a square, you can see that there's these bars at the top and at the bottom because we fit in the square, and it's not quite as nice. So that's why we went to a fill mode. Ah, look, I can gesticulate here. <laughs> That's why we went to um, the, the fill mode, uh, but that does mean that we have to adjust these. Let's go see where we did that. Oh, reduce that down. So we've made a title somewhere. Where was that title? There it is. So there's our title. And then down below here, we've got this resize function, frame.onResize, call resize. So here's the resize function. And in there, we're saying, hey, if there is a title, because we may have resized before we even accepted the camera, so we don't want an error. If there is a title, then locate it again at the visible left. Oh, it's visible left, not visible X. Plus 30, plus a little bit, visible top, plus 30. 
We're doing that with the slider we're going to make to and the icon. So all those things are being um, located uh, as we resize the function. I think resize will happen automatically at the beginning. We probably don't need to manually call it, but I've got one in there just in case. Um, do, da, do, do, do. So there's the title, which means we probably didn't have to locate it there. Could have deleted that. Uh, most likely what we did is we built this in the fit mode and then realized full mode or fill mode would be better and then we'd probably retrofit it with a, a resize here I would imagine and same with the slider if we've got a location because th those things are going to be done automatically for us uh, down here when we call the resize all right um, note that we're doing this thing called chaining here 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 so we're dotting on to the slider. If we didn't need the title down below here, if we didn't have to reposition the title, then because of chaining, we don't even really need to store things in variables. And so it's quite often that you'll see we make a slider, we just do stuff to it, and we never even store it in a variable because we don't need to reference it later. Here with our rescaling, we do have to, to reference it later, so that's why we've stuck them in variables. Uh, just hopefully, let's see, that's on ready. And I put these outside. Where, do we need them outside? Not really, because the, the event here is put inside. I think at one point I put the resize event outside, maybe out here, and then realized, ah, okay, probably better to bring them in. In other words, we don't, we, we could have said let title here and let uh, actually it's only going to be ready once, I think. Yeah, so these could even be cons. cons. There we go. Uh, did I? Yeah. Okay, so that could probably be inside there as well. What else? Yeah, so that means normal frameworks would probably scale something after they store it. They would say something like... Uh, and the next line slider dot scale like that is equal to something with a scale property and same with alpha alpha like that uh, equals point whatever point eight so that's using the alpha property and that still works in zim but that would to use properties like that you need a variable name and remember uh, half the or most of the time when we're using the fit mode most of the time we don't even need variable names anymore because we just continue to chain so that would have caused us, if we wanted to go to the alpha, it would cause us to come, we'd have to come out of the chaining. Whereas if we chain, we don't need to. See that? Yeah, it's all, all made for us right there in the chaining. So Zim is very chainable, almost everything chains. We've even made short chainable methods for alpha and scale and size and rote and, you know, this kind of thing. Anyway, and that's also blend modes there. That will default, by the way, to a blend mode of a difference. Uh, blend mode, difference. But you've got other blend modes that you can put in there if you needed to. And we've added a chainable change method so that we don't have to do, do slider.on. We can use slider.on, um, change, like that, call this arrow function. That's obviously very similar to add event listener, <laughs> linter, listener. But who wants to type that? You know what I mean? So that's why uh, CreateJS, which is uh, the library we're built on, Zim's built on CreateJS, which gave us the stage and events primarily. Um, they said, ah, nah, you know, let's just use on. On's much shorter. So that's what CreateJS would give us. Zim, we've added a change, a chainable method so that we don't have to come out because again, we if if we want to use the on method, we'd have to go up here and declare that as a variable so that we could later do it. You can't chain the on method because it returns an ID so that you can turn something off. Okay, anyway. Uh, do, 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 do. We do want to call this a const slider like that is equal to. And when we're changing, what we're doing is we're taking the cam motions cam. So the cam motion has a cam property that represents the camera. 
and changing its alpha to whatever the slider's current value is. So here's the slider's current value. Uh, we got the variable slider there, but if you didn't have the variable, you would do e.target there. e.target still works. So you see that, and that, that would allow us not to have the slider thing. And then we say, oh, well, whatever the event object, which is e, e.target's um, current value would be that. Okay, you've probably seen that before. But because we have slider, <laughs> somewhere got slider, because we have slider, it's a bit more readable to use slider there, I think. All right, we're making an icon. Zim's got an icon stored in the frame. That's the Zim icon, and that will be positioned in the resize event here. There's the resize event. Maybe just one last note about the slider. That's with a change. You could also uh, wire that. So you could wire the slider. That's now to the cam motion alpha property, something like this, comma. Uh, and then the current value is default, so that's that's all you need. Um, so Zim provided uh, in Zim Cat, I think it was, we introduced wire, where we instead of even using events, we can wire up the cam motions cam its alpha property. By default, it will be to since this is on a slider, it will be the default the current value of the slider, and that would also wire up the alpha. Isn't that amazing? So let's have a look at that out here in Zim. Hopefully I'm not whipping around too quickly for you. In the news section of the Zim site, Zim... Oh, I got a surprise! A surprise! So one out of a hundred times you'll get um, this popping up here. This is also an NFT. Uh, th not this specific one, but this one is an NFT on FX Hash. And look at this. Isn't it amazing? So there we are trying to solve a puzzle. You see how those go together. And once it solves, it chops it. Well, we're almost solved. Do you want to see it solved? Oh, yeah. Come on. Let's solve it. Let's solve it. It won't take long. Uh, now what, though? Hmm. I think these ones go in here. Yeah, they do. And these two probably go up at the top. Boop. There we go. So once it's solved, it will then make a new puzzle for us. Um, so what we've done in Zim is this is a banner feature. If uh, You'll note that the banner looks like this as well. It's about to chop itself up. There it goes. You can see all what's new in Zim there. But um, the banner, so we're on the news section, and the banner looks like that as well. Uh, it's already drawn itself in. And normally you click on the banner, and then you see this. And you click on that, and you go back again. Uh, but one out of 100 times, we pop you into the actual big sort of expanded open. <laughs> Isn't that funny? <laughs> we, we got it. So in the Zim news here, down below, uh, there's information on, about Zimcat, which is a few versions ago. And in Zimcat, this was what the site looked like at Zimcat. You would open this thing up, and this was all built in Zim. And you can see uh, the various features of Zimcat that we were doing. One of those features is bum 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 bum. Oh, there's generator, which works like processing. Uh, connectors, flipper, socket, synth, no, wire. Here it is. So this is the little, it's a, it's our ugliest uh, feature page. Uh, it's just showing us that as we move the slider, I'm wiring up the position of the rectangle there as well. And that that thing is a filter on the slider to, to do something if something's happening. And also it's wired the other way around too. Uh, just with the X is wired to the the slider. Here's the dial and the dial is wired to the, the just like that. Isn't that neat? So that's another option in Zim as opposed to the um, and, and all this is for this slider right here. We're bringing up the alpha with this slider. It's another option instead of events. I'm going to do that though. And oh, I just did my undo of all that stuff too. Oh, well, whatever. Hmm. Making icon, frame dot resize, great. And the errors. You know what? I think we've looked through this. That was a lot of uh, extra stuff that we looked at. And once again, we'll have we'll have, have a template, a zip file 
of all of this stuff. Basically, you upload that to TIA, and then it takes care of uploading it to the interplanetary file system. And you can get a bunch of interactive NFTs as well. Yay! So I hope you're looking forward to this series. This was the first official one. What happened is we did uh, we did one. We did a, a, a Zim Explore, it's called, on one of these NFTs. And it became, I think, the most popular uh, YouTube video that we had going, aside from maybe our feature ones. So we said, oh, okay, people are interested in making interactive NFTs. Why don't we take you through how we built these? And so that is what the series is all about. Uh, I'm Dr. Abstract here, and um, very cool, huh? Do you like it? Um, this has been uh, Making of Interactive NFTs. <laughs> <laughs>